Hi everybody, Nigel with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. So what have we got here? We have an introduction to this new build that we're bringing up. Um, and this is the Hong Kong Models A20G Havoc over Europe. Um, I've had this for a while now. Um, uh, Hong Kong Models kindly sent me this kit to, uh, to review, which I did. And I've now got a load of aftermarket to go with it as well. So this video won't actually be the start of the build. What I'm going to talk about is I'm going to show you what I've got, show you all the aftermarket, tell you where it all comes from, and then basically talk about how I'm going to go about the build and how I'm going to show you the, the different bits and pieces. So if you're interested in this model, stay tuned. If you're not interested in this model, look out for part one, which will be coming very, very soon while we'll start work on this. But this I won't be actually doing any work in this video at all. So, um, this is the A20G Havoc, as I say, in 132nd scale. It's a beautiful kit. If you haven't seen the review, go and have a look. Um, it's for sure it's Hong Kong model's best ever. Um, th there's been a couple of small issues, um, which I'll cover now, um, th that have been discovered. But other than that, everything seems absolutely fine. And there doesn't seem to have been any grumbles um, about accuracy or whatever. So, uh, certainly not from me anyway. Um... Which is unusual, you may say. So basically, yeah, the kit is, um, what's the kit number? 01E039. This is the G, the G version. There is actually a JK version coming out. Today is Monday, the 16th of October, 2023. Uh, so that's how you can judge the timeline. Um, but yeah, within about another month, six weeks, the JK version is coming in and Hong Kong models have already been in touch and told me they're actually sending me that kit over. So look out for a review of that one. The J is basically a glass nose G and the K is a glass nose H. So and the reason they put a glass nose in them was because they were found they were very inaccurate with their bombing. So they put a glass nose in in one out of 10 aircraft, one out of 11 aircraft. And then they had a bomb aimer that could go up front and um, tell the others when to drop their bombs. So um, in this one, you get three options. You get marking A, which is Weathersfield, uh, UK. Uh, big in the news at the moment here in the UK. Um, so June 1944. And then the same aircraft, 9224, as you can see, um, is now over in Villaroche. I guess that's how you say it. Over in France, and that's October 44. And then here we have the same aircraft again. They've done the Airfix style. Well, Airfix have done the Hong Kong models thing because Hong Kong models brought this out before the Airfix Sea King. But the Airfix Sea King, as you know, it's XV666 um, in four different guises through its life. And so here we are now. We're in France. We're in Paris, 4th of November, 1944. So we've got three options in the kit to build. And it is a very lovely kit indeed. But as you always know, there is always stuff out there to improve things. And the aftermarket have jumped all over this like a rash. So I'm going to show you some of the extras I've got for this kit. Most of them, I'll tell you, most of them have been donated to the channel. Um, I've only bought a couple of them, to be honest. So, and I'm going to do this by company name in alphabetical order. So there's no preference or anything. I think that's the best way to do it because there's a lot of stuff which is sort of, I've got, three different cockpits for example I think I think there's three maybe even four so um we'll start off with the nose gear one of the issues with the kit this is a must-have I think for this kit the nose gear is made beautifully to scale and everything is really nice and as you can see it's all very thin and spindly um, and if you're familiar with this kit you will know all this already um, and this piece here actually glues onto the leg like that as you can see there okay and then these two mounts here go into the side walls of the nose gear bay and that is it that is all that is supporting your model so it's not strong enough it needs to be replaced so before the kit was even released in the UK pe people were talking people from other parts of the world or people who had the kit were saying that the nose gear was too weak so I actually sent this nose gear up to aircraft up to um Ali up at aircraft and he made a metal nose gear for it and here it is and when you get the nose gear, it's got a big slug on this end. So this is the um, this is the nose gear as you get it. Now we thought that this was going to be the weak spot here, so he's made this leg. The problem is <clears throat> this you still have this plastic piece here which goes on and has to be super glued in place, and it's still supported by these sides. Well, as I say, there's a great big lug on here. You can see it there in the bag. I've just cut it off. I should have left it on there before I did this. Um, but that's that great big lug on there. 
Um, and what Ali has done is come up with a conversion where you've got, this is the rest of the set, and he's got this, this piece here that goes up into the nose gear bay and then that great big slug will sit in that hole and that will actually support the leg and make it very strong. Um, and I looked at that and a lot of people on the Facebook page were saying they wanted a more accurate nose gear bay. Um, well, a couple of people were anyway. So I've come up with this and basically what I'm doing here is brazing a 1.2 millimeter brass rod across the leg. And then what you do is you'll cut these two diagonal legs off of this plastic part, glue them on. And which way does it go? Yes, it is that way. You'll glue them on like so onto there and then you've got a very strong nose gear and you've got it sat on this soldered on brass rod which is why I've got this one Steve sent me his to do so I'm going to brass that do that one for him and uh, send that back down so um so that's what I've done there so aircraft have made a beautiful brass nose gear um, for the aircraft to replace the weak plastic parts now what um, Hong Kong model have done they've listened to the the complaints and they've actually remade the nose gear in metal it's white metal I don't know if it's hard or soft but they are sending me some so I'll have a look um, and they've made molded it all as one so you've got this one piece metal leg which is the way to go great the only trouble is the way the kits designed you spread these legs apart and fit the nose wheel and obviously if it's metal you can't do that so what they've done they've cut it off here and they've made this piece here a separate part so there you've got to glue that on. So you're still back to having this weak area. Now I'm going to see if I can pin it and solder it or something. I'm going to have a look as soon as it comes. But um, the JK model is coming with metal nose gear included in the kit. So um, you won't need to buy any metal gear for that one. Unless, of course, you want to get the brass leg, which will probably be a lot nicer than the white metal one. And certainly in this area will be stronger, but won't be strong up here. So, I mean, what you might decide to do is cut your metal gear off from I'm just thinking out loud while I think of it I'm talking about it you might decide to cut the metal leg off here from your Hong Kong models kit cut the brass leg off here and then pin them and put them together then you have the beauty of having this strong bottom end from the aircraft one and the strong top end from uh, from Hong Kong models so as I say the JK is going to come with the metal leg included so that's um that's aftermarket bit number one that's the aircraft metal nose gear and obviously I'm going to be using that one in my kit this one can go back over here out of the way uh, so that's that out of the way again in alphabetical order now so we've got Airscale we've got two products here from Airscale for this model and first of all we've got the cockpit upgrade set which is very very nice indeed I've reviewed this already if you want to go back and have a look at a proper review this is just a quick look at what we've got and how and sort of not how and where but how I'm going to use them um, in the in the build so in this set we have obviously a decal for the instrument panel we have an acetate sheet which is great for forming your your lenses for your um, for your dials and then we have here we have a nickel silver printed photo etch or photo etch sheet not printed and as you can see there we could line those gauges up behind there and if I can catch it in the light you will see those lovely glass lenses on there it gives you a lovely effect and um, these are my favorite cockpits airscale Peter over airscale does a beautiful job so this is actually you can see you've got a new seat to replace the plastic one we've got this thin metal section here which is in the open canopy if you have it open that'll be on show um, which is a lot nicer than the plastic part we've got a new throttle lever assembly and obviously we've got the instrument panel here so it's all very nice. We don't have any details for the sides of the cockpit or anything, but we do have, you can see on the back here, we have that metal panel there. We have the seat and we have all the instrument panel there and everything. Obviously you've got to paint this. It's not like Edward, it's not pre-painted. Um, and you've got the decals behind. So basically you put the decal on there and then you stick the acetate on and then you stick this on here. And you can see we've got all these holes in here and they're for switches. So you can put a piece of wire in them to, um, to make them look like switches. So, uh, if you want to see that being done, I've actually done a video, um, I think it's a two-parter, on using the Airscale um, set for the Lancaster. And I did all the wires and everything on them, so go and have a look at that. Um, and then here we have <clears throat> the Airscale United States Army Air Force seat belts. 
and um, these are very very nice indeed they're very similar to the old RB Productions ones and basically what you've got in here is you've got your sort of blotting paper style belts that's like a blotting paper so you can stain them and make them look great you can also run a rivet rivet uh, rivet tool up them and um, make it like stitching whatever and then give them a wash and then you've got your photo etch buckles there, which are very nice indeed. So, and then you can see there's the stitch embossing tool there as well you can use rather than a riveter. So, uh, very nice indeed. Very, very nice indeed. It's almost like they'll work. And you can see in here you've got the assembly instructions on the back. And it's telling you how to do them, words and pictures. So you can see they're very, very involved and they do look very nice when they're done. So, um... <clears throat> Whether I'll use them on this kit or not, I do not know. I may well do, we shall see. And then again, staying in the alphabetical bit, we've got some bits and pieces here from Anise. This company here, Anise. Very good company. Go look at the website. They make some beautiful little accessories and stuff. And here we have cockpit handles in 132nd and 135th. So you can see the little T handles there. So we'll probably be using a couple of those in here. We have some dials and knobs. Remember, these aren't sort of age related. You can use them on any aircraft. And we've got square ones. We've got the, the sort of dials that on off and everything. So you've got all those on there and you can see all the different ones you get there. 3D printed. And if you've got a 3D printer, a resin 3D printer, he will actually sell you the program so you can print your own. Uh, we've got the covered over toggle switches here, which are very, very nice. I think we'll be using a couple of those in here. And then I, this is what I got these for. The toggle switches, they're actually for... I bought them for this kit. They're very nice, all the different sizes. Um, so I'm going to try those here. Rather than just using the wire, I'm going to try those. Because the wire is great, but toggle switches aren't actually just a straight wire. They're always like a dome top, and they've normally got a ring around the base. So that's why I've got these. So I'll be using those in this build. Um, so we'll have a look at those while we're, using the, while we're doing it. We've also got now <clears throat> our scale kit. Now I've got a proper frog in my throat this morning. So this is the first one. These are actually HGW, these seat belts. Um, an art scale kit has made the, the actual seat. And what this is, this is a it's a beautiful little set. If you want to do an early A20, the seat in the kit is incorrect. So this is actually for an early A20. You have the early pilot seat there that you can actually use in the kit. And then we have the HGW seat belts you can see on there. You've actually got two lots of buckles uh, because these actually cover the the rear um, the, 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 the the turret as well, I believe. Um, so yeah, very very nice, very very nicely done. So um, as you can see, we've got the main shoulder strap there, and then we've got the the uh, the waist straps here, and then you've got the waist straps here for the um, for the turret. So very nice indeed. Lovely lovely set. So, um, but I won't be using the seat because this isn't, this is November 44. So certainly not an early, an early G, but I may well use the belts. Which is a bit of toss up between, between these belts and the um, air scale ones. I may build up both just so you can see them. And then also from art scale kit, we've got here, we've got resin guns for the nose. Now a lot of people would say I'd rather have the master barrels, but when you actually look at the model, the amount of gun that's sticking out, um, as you can see here, you see it's just basically the tips of the gun sticking out. If you're doing it all closed up, so you may as well just use the resin ones because the, the downside with resin ones is they're easy to snap, as are the plastic ones, whereas the metal ones are a lot stronger. But, you know, for, for what you're going to see, I don't think you need to go to the expense of the metal barrels when you can just get these. And you can see the ends of them are beautifully printed. And they'll look every bit as good as brass. Plus they're easier to paint and the um, the paint won't chip off so easily either. So there you go. So that's the art scale kit. These are all available. Um, in fact, everything except, I don't think the nose gear is available from Hanant's, but everything else I've shown you so far, if you're in the UK, you can get from Hanant's. Um, any art scale products, any air scale products are available from Hanant's in the UK. Or indeed you can go direct and buy them from their website. But with Art Scale Kit, they're in the Czech Republic, so the postage is quite um, prohibitive. So here we have again from Art Scale Kit is our beautiful mask set, and this is the one-sided set. So this will be the <clears throat> the outside only. Sorry, my bloody frog in my throat. Um, this will be the one-sided outside only, 
and then the double sided is for the inside and the outside. This is really nice and I'm fortunate that he's actually sent me two of these. This is one of his original ones you can see not for sale sample. Um, so I've got a set now ready for the JK version as well although I'm going to need a set for the um, for the nose glazing aren't I? So uh, yeah I don't I hate masking glazing it's horrible it's so time consuming going around especially for something like this with quite a lot of glass in it. Um, you know if it's something like a a hurricane or something then maybe you can get away with just doing it yourself but certainly something like an Avro Anson or a Hunkle 111 get a masking set it's, it's uh it goes without saying right so um moving on from art scale kit to Edward start off with here here we have the wheels now there's been a problem with these wheels the the actual main wheels are too big I pointed this out to Edward and they are now making new wheels and mine are apparently in the post, they're imminent, so as soon as they arrive I will show you the difference between the ones in here. Um, but these are actually very, very nice indeed. If you're into accuracy, um, they're obviously a lot nicer because they've got the diamond tread, whereas the kit tyres are non-treaded. And also the kit nose wheel is inaccurate. Obviously the aircraft that, um, that Neil used from Hong Kong Models had an aftermarket or a later model front wheel and this wheel in here is totally correct according to my book this is the correct wheel for an A20G in 44 so um, this is one of the problems with using restored aircraft for reference and photographs and things like that it's um, often they're not exactly as they should have been on the day um, so also from Edward I have bought this so this is the A20G, um, if you notice it doesn't say cockpit because it's basically the cockpit set and on the back here you've got some other bits and pieces, you've got some bits and pieces for the guns here, you've got bits and pieces for the engine um, and, and a few other little greebies as well. There's some hinges there for the nose gear, there's detail in here for the nose gear bay, got these bits here and these bits down here. So this is like a little sort of general set if you want to just fancy your kit up a bit. The kit out of the box is very, very nice. Um, but, uh, you know, it's always worth having these bits and pieces. And this, this set not only covers the instrument panel like the air scale kit does, but it also has bits and pieces for the sides. So um, very nice to have. But there's a few little things. Like I've noticed there's a lever down here that goes to the left of the pilot seat. I think the plastic moulded part is finer, far nicer than the um, than the two-dimensional metal part. So, you know, pays your money, takes your choice. But uh, you don't have to use all this. Most people don't. But um, you can see on here that what you've got... i get this out. What you've got on here, if you're new to Edward, is you've got the the instrument panel there. It's printed, it's, it's printed on a flat sheet. And then you've got the glazing is also printed on there. You can see the dials are shiny. And then when you put that on, you've got the shiny dial there. Um, the only trouble with that, you can see on there, because it's sort of painted on, it's kind of um, convex rather than being dead flat. And that's why I like the air scale method of, of using the, the acetate to, um, to simulate the glass. Having said that, on this model, you can hardly see the instrument panel anyway. Because one of the issues with the kit, which I'm going to address, the instrument panel is too far forward. It's, it's way forward, way more forward than it should be. And I haven't yet worked out how to correct it or why it's even wrong or what is wrong. But the instrument panel is too far forward. So there we go. So that's that set there. That's 32112. And very nice little set that is for, um, for tarting up your model, as it were. Um, and then we've got these two here. This is the Bombay. Um, Again, not 100% necessary. The kit parts are lovely, but where you've got these ribs going up the sides of the Bombay, the kit parts are just solid slabs of plastic. These have all the rivet detail and holes and everything in them. So um, very, very nice. You may decide to completely remove the plastic and replace them with these. And then I'll just look like single sheets of aluminium, which is what they were. Or what they've done, Edward have given you two pieces and they go either side of the plastic part. So it ends up, it's still quite thick, but you have the detail on both sides. Pays your money, takes your choice. The minimum I'm going to do, if I don't remove them completely, what I intend to do is actually cut holes where these circles are, so you can actually see through them. Obviously, when Hong Kong models made the, the Bombay halves, um, like this, the moulding doesn't allow you to make holes that way, so unless you had pins going through or something, but uh, that's just, that's not going to happen. 
So yeah, lovely, lovely set. We've got the, the actual roof detail there and you've got all these hinges here and everything. It's very, very nice indeed and covers the complete Bombay and will really make it pop. So we'll be using that on this build. Uh, that one is 32484. And then we've got this one here, 32485, and this is the main wheel wells. Again, the kit parts are lovely, but this one's giving you all this extra detail um, and the, the, the panels up the sides, you know, with the holes in rather than just being solid slabs of plastic. But very, very nice indeed it is too. We've got the hinges down here for the doors and uh, beautiful set. And as I say, that's 32485 um, and I'll be using that on this build. Uh, and then finally, um, alphabetically, if we use numbers, this should have been first. But as a word, one starts with O, so this will be last. This is the One Man Army um, masking set for the Hong Kong Models A20G Havoc. Uh, and a beautiful set it is. Um, you can see on here, if I just open this up and get this out, you can see on here that we don't only have, not only do we have the livery markings, so you've got all you can see on here, you've got all your stars and bars and your codes and everything, but you've also got your stencils. And you can see here, if you haven't seen my reviews, I've done three or four videos on how to use these. And uh, go and have a look, they're absolutely stunning. You can see that all your stencils are also included. So you put these over, mask around them, and then you can spray over whatever colour you like, whatever intensity you like, you can spray over and you have your stencils actually painted on. Bear in mind, with most of these sets, they are replacing kit decals. But with this set, it's actually giving you the stencils because there are none. There are no stencils on the kit decals. So um, there we go. And if you go and look at the Facebook page, there's a great build of this. Wes Shoulders built it and he's got the he's got this set. He's got this. Set. And one of the issues, uh, what do I get the instructions out again to show you? Um, so something you need to be prepared for. Uh, he struggled with it and he got around it by actually using the decal in the end. But if you look on here, it's difficult to see, but if you look on here, you've got this F here, okay? That F goes over the trailing edge of the wing. So obviously using that, that mask was extremely difficult. So he ended up just using the decal for the F and it came out beautifully. So. Um, the decals in the kit are very, very nice, apparently. Um, they're, they're cartograph, but the actual kit decals apparently are really, really nice. But um, I will probably do the same, because making that mask go over that, because it's not only is it sort of going up and down, it's also tapered, because it's the trailing edge, it's the wing route. So it um, be very, very difficult to do. But uh, go and have a look on the Facebook page, A20G Have a Build. And uh, you can see his work on there. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous, his model. Um, so, yeah, so that's the One Man Army masks. And they are, for me, they're a must-have. I, I absolutely love them. Um, obviously, Sven sends me these. But even if he didn't send them to me, I would I would buy them. They're, they're so worth having. I've bought a couple of sets myself, actually, for other models. And um, they are very, very nice indeed. And, again, Sven will be, as will, I think, um, our, our kit will be Peter... We'll be at Telford this year, so go and say hello. I don't think I'll be going to Telford this year, so unfortunately I'll have to wait till next year, I think. But um, So there we go. So that's the Art Scale Kit Masks. As I say, I'll be using them. Now, <clears throat> as I say, this video is all about an introduction to the build. So what am I going to do? Right, I've got all this stuff, and as I say, most of it has been sent to me. The Art Scale stuff, the Art Scale Kit, a couple of the Edward bits have been sent to me free of charge, as has the Aerocraft nose gear sent to me so I can review it for them. Very, very generous of them. Thank you very much. Um, but what I'm going to do, when it comes to assembling the copy, I've got all the parts off the sprue here all cleaned up, uh, ready to go. And what I'm going to do, so that you can see, for because I got the kit for free as well, so I feel I owe it to Hong Kong Models to show you how the cockpit builds out of the box. So what I'm going to do is build the cockpit out of the box using the kit decal, we'll paint it as they suggest and see how it looks. Okay, and I'm sure it's going to look very, very nice. Then I'm going to take it all apart, strip the paint, clean it all up and put it together using the Edward set. Okay, now some of the Edward's parts are not included in the Airscale kit, so I don't know what I'm going to do. But we'll do all that 
and then once you've seen how that looks I'll remove all that and then I'm going to build the cockpit again and this time try and correct it because as I say when we fit the actual cockpit floor sorry the, the when we fit the instrument panel to the floor not the floor to the instrument panel when we fit that there it's actually sitting the instrument panel is sitting too far forward in the fuselage and I haven't worked out yet what's wrong there's something wrong um, either this whole thing is too far forward the cockpit is too long I don't know but I think the I think the, the first thing we can do is remove a section of plastic from here a triangular section and bring these panels down okay so bring them down to a steeper angle and then let that all come back because what a couple of people have done is cut sections out of here and then brought that forward and had it over over that cross member that's gone across there but what I'd like to have a go at is bringing these panels down and then bring the whole thing forward because when it's actually in the model it's very it's about that far inside the the actual combing and you can't see it at all so um something there's there's something wrong and I can't work out what it is maybe this here is too far forward as I say I will work it out I won't keep any secrets I'll let you know exactly what I'm doing and I'll show you how to do how I've done it not how to do it I'll show you how I've done it and if you want to copy me you can um so basically that's that so I will be doing that and I'll build the cockpit three times and I'll finish off with the Edward bits in the side but with the air scale instrument panel whether I use the air scale seat or not I don't know the kit seat's very nice um but the air the air scale one is obviously folded sheet metal so it's going to be a lot nicer because the seat is folded sheet metal so uh, we shall see um i've got all the parts off to build the cockpit this part here is actually part of the bomb bay i believe um and obviously we're going to move on to the nose gear and i'm going to be using my modified leg with the with the soldered on brass rod and i'll show you how i'm going to do that and everything um and then we'll go from there and we'll just get on with the build and then and then from there on in it's pretty much standard um, we've got these barrels here which we've got in the art scale kit set which we probably put in last um, and then we've got the Bombay obviously we're going to be using all the Edward stuff in there we've got a lot of stuff to go in here in the Edward set um, I've printed off the instructions <clears throat> so as you can see we've got a lot of stuff in the Edward set which is going to go in these side panels and then again on the other side here you've got more stuff going in and then we're going into building up the instrument panel, throttle levers and everything there. And then here we've got bits and pieces actually going into the cockpit. Now none of this is included in the air scale set, so we'll be use all, use all that. And then we've got bits and pieces for the machine guns. We've got bits and pieces for the, for the actual undercarriage doors. Um, here we've got the nose gear bay roof. And then here we've got bits and pieces for the engines and bits and pieces for the guns and grab handles and everything so there's even a couple of bits for the turret there look so there we are um so that is what we're going to do so keep your eyes open for part one and part one will be building the cockpit i don't know how far we'll get with it uh whether i'll just do that just the standard one in part one or do the all three in part one we shall see but um that is the plan i'm going to glue it together with white glue i'm going to use this glue here um and then I'll be able to just soak it in water and take it apart again at the end, soak it in IPA, strip the paint and then start again. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that little video. That's just an intro to the build. I'm going to be making a start on this straight away. Um, I need to finish the Chieftain. I need to finish the Scammel, but I just don't have the mojo for it. I just don't want to do it. I, I, I get the Scammel out. I look at it. I play with it and it goes back in the box. Um, I need to want to work on it before I do anything. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all soon with part one of this build and some other bits and pieces coming your way as well. Bye for now.